Hey Capricorn, this is Dana with Taurus Star Tarot and we are about to do a monthly reading for you for the month of March. If you'd like a personal reading from me, you can reach me at TaurusStarTarot.com. If you want to wait at the end of this video, I'm going to give a little spiel about some things and uh, you're more than welcome to stay and if not, namaste, okay? All right, here we go. You open this reading with the Fool card, right? A new beginning and a new journey in your life followed by the chariot, which tells me that you have the control, the willpower, and the determination to take whatever action is necessary to ensure your success in this new journey that you're about to take. Seven of Cups tells me that you have some confusion, though. You have some confusion because with the Six of Swords, this is a regretful but necessary transition. With the King of Cups crossing both of these cards, this tells me that you're trying to get a handle on your feelings about this new journey, this new beginning, this transition, regretful but necessary transition in your life. This transition is going to lead you to the King of Pentacles, right? This transition is all about gaining security, control, power, and abundance in your life. The wheel comes in and says that you're about to start a new chapter. You're about to start a new life cycle in your life. The universe has deemed you worthy to start a new cycle in your life because apparently you have learned what you needed to learn from your current cycle and you're being released, right? You're being released to start a new cycle. However, with the two, not however, with the two of wands right there, it just reiterates that you are thinking hard about your future and planning for your future, right? New journey, action, determination for success. Confusion though, confusion because it's a regretful but necessary transition in your life. The King of Cups says you're trying to get a handle on it. This transition you are hoping will land you in the spot of the King of Pentacles, right? Having security, control, power, and abundance in your life. The wheel, you're about to start a new chapter in your life, a new, a new cycle. The two of wands, you're going to be planning for your future, right? Planning for your future. We come down here to the hermit and the high priestess. Because of the confusion, right? Because of the regret about this transition, trying to get a handle on your feelings, you sit down side by side with the hermit and the high priestess. This is some intense soul searching that's going on right here. The Hermit is about um, introspection, soul searching, and seeking inner guidance. And the High Priestess is who you are sitting down with in the Hermit energy. You're, you're searching your intuition, your subconscious mind, sitting down with spirit and just trying to work things out. What are you working out? You're working out um, what makes you happy in your life. That's what you're working out. You're trying to work out what makes you happy in your life. The Nine of Wands comes in and says you come out of this meeting with the, with the Hermit and the High Priestess feeling really strong about the direction that you're going to go and the decisions that you've made in this executive sit-down right here. Justice comes in and says that you, you, have, you have truth. You have internal truth truth about the situation. Justice has been applied. You've worked it out and a decision has been um, determined, right? That decision is to release the pain of whatever these, these regretful feelings are up here, to release that pain, to have some optimism, and with the Ace of Wands, to have an inspired, powerful, creative new beginning in your life. The Princess of Pentacles down here, can't see that. The Princess of Pentacles down here says that you are manifesting a brand new opportunity in your life, potentially a very prosperous opportunity in your life. The Nine of Pentacles says that there is a culmination to the confusion and the indecision, right? And a sense of self sufficiency. Oops, I forgot the Eight of Pentacles, sorry. So the Princess of Pentacles was crossed by the Eight of Pentacles, right? This is about um, mastering your life. So you're manifesting a new, potentially prosperous opportunity in your life. Something that you want to grab the bull by the horns and master, right? You want to master your life. Could be 
that you want to master this new opportunity in your life. But regardless, you're going to put the wood to the fire and you're going to intently work on things. Nine of Pentacles comes in and says that there's a culmination to all of this and a sense of self-sufficiency and independence. The Four of Cups comes in and says that you have reevaluated and contemplated everything. With the Princess of Cups, she's a messenger of creative new beginnings in your life, right? And we have all these. Look at all these carrot cards over here. Two of Swords comes in and says that um, that you 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 have some confusion about what it is that you're going to invest yourself into. You have some confusion about planning for your future. Six of Cups comes in <clears throat> and says that, you know, I think maybe you're moving back home. Are you moving back home? But the Six of Cups is about everything that's familiar to us, okay? Oh, that's what it is. You're afraid to leave everything that's familiar to you. That's what this is. You're afraid to leave everything that's familiar to you. That's where the confusion comes in. That's where the regretful but necessary transition comes in. That's where you trying to get a hold of your emotions comes into play. Sitting down with the High Priestess and the Hermit trying to figure out what makes you happy. Coming out feeling strong, internal truth gaining some optimism, releasing the pain, and having an inspired new beginning with a sense of culmination, uh, an inspired new beginning in regards to manifesting a potentially very prosperous opportunity in your life with the Eight of Pentacles, just putting the nose to the grindstone and just doing it, right? Nine of Pentacles, a culmination to everything, a sense of independence and self-sufficiency. You have thought about this a lot, obviously, with the, with the High Priestess and the Hermit. This, what you've been thinking about is, is this creative new beginning that's on the horizon for you. You have a lot of, of confusion and conflict, though, about what it is you're going to invest yourself in to plan for your future because you don't want to leave everything that's familiar to you, followed by the moon card. Um, this is fear and anxiety, right? But strength comes in and says that that you you strengthen yourself right you strengthen yourself you're gonna be all right capricorn you're gonna be all right the ten of ten of swords comes in and says that you are afraid of inevitable ruin you're afraid you have a fear of ruin right you you do but the queen of swords comes in and says that that you are getting a handle on yourself right she is very independent, okay? And maybe you're afraid that you're going to lose some of your independence for some of you. But nevertheless, the Queen of Swords comes in and she, you know, she's a quick thinker. She's organized, she's perceptive, and she's independent, right? So you're you're gaining control over these the this fear of ruin right here. The lover's card comes in. This talks about choices, okay? Yeah, it talks about love, but it talks about it talks about, <coughs> excuse me, talks about harmony in your life, values alignment, and choices that you're making. There's the confusion again, right? So the Queen of Swords is gaining her independence. She's, she's not letting the fear of, of ruin or an inevitable end to everything that's familiar with you. She's not letting that she's not letting that dictate the choices that you're going to make in your life. Even though, even though you have confusion and inner conflict with the Five of Wands. Hangman comes in and says that you, you, you stop for a minute and you process this whole pile of cards right here. Now these are all emotional and intellectual processes, right? So the hangman comes in and says that you're processing what we just talked about right there. The decision that you come to when you come out of pausing, surrendering, letting go, and coming out on the other side with new perspectives is that you're going to take swift action. Swift action, you're executing, right? Um, maybe even travel, but this is a card about swift change, speed, action, and movement in your life in order to have control, authority, establishment, and structure in your life. 
the sun card comes out and says you're seeing things clearly now. You're seeing things clearly and you know what's going to make you happy. Remember back here, you were sitting down with the high priestess and the hermit determining what makes you happy? Sun card says you got that all figured out. You want to create abundance in your life. Not only do you want to create abundance in your life, but this empress is about having control of all of your emotions. She is the, the culmination of all four queens in the deck. This empress has control over her security. She has control over her passion. She has control over her feels and her emotions. And she has control over her thoughts and her communications, right? So you, you come through this hangman mode feeling like a boss, knowing where you're going to go and what you're going to do. The Two of Swords comes in again and says that you are, um, you are calling a truce. You're calling a truce, right? White flag truce to your emotions, to your disparaging thoughts, to your fears with the Devil card. You are going to go forward. It's a regretful but necessary transition because remember back here, you're afraid with the Six of Cups to leave everything that's familiar to you. But you are going to go forward with it. And now, instead of fear and confusion, you have a sense of enthusiasm and excitement. A sense of exploration and discovery. A sense of a free spirit, freedom, which is what you need to go on the journey with the fool, right? chariot comes in again and says that you are going to progress forward. You have the self-control, the willpower, and the determination to do whatever action is necessary to ensure your success, and you are moving forward. With the temperance, this tells me that you see this as the purpose in your life at this particular moment. And the Ace of Cups comes in and says that you feel really, really good about this decision. And it's interesting to me that we started out with the Fool, the begin new beginning and the new journey. We went through all these cards and we ended up with um, a feeling of, of, of the warm fuzzies, right? The warm fuzzies. You feel so good about the decision that you're making to move forward and transition into the next phase of your life. Gone through a lot here, you know, back and forth, and you know what you want to do, but you're, you're afraid to do it at the same time. And we end this reading with you being very much okay with the decisions that you're making and where you're going. There you go, Capricorn. That is your reading. I do hope you enjoyed it. Now, for the spiel. The spiel. It's super important to watch three elements of your astrological chart. There's a link in the box below where you can go to a website that you can um, download your birth chart, okay? It's important to know your sun sign, which today is Capricorn. This is how you receive information from the world. Your moon sign, which is, you know, the moon is related to the, to the gravitational force and the tides and it represents our feelings, right? Your moon sign is how you feel about things and that's how you process the information that comes in. Your ascending sign or your rising sign is how you put that information back out into the world. So it's important to know those three aspects when you're watching free um, general readings on YouTube. So if you cross-watch those other signs for yourself, and if you're watching for somebody else, if you cross-watch their signs, you will get a more comprehensive, complete understanding of what is unfolding in your lives. In addition to that, those three signs will help you to communicate with the people in your life. Imagine the advantage that you'll have if you understand how somebody receives communication, how somebody processes communication, and how somebody puts communication back out on the other side. It gives you an advantage because you can tailor your communication to be received, processed, and returned um, in, in an artful kind of way to be able to get the results that you want to get. And I don't mean that in a manipulative kind of way. I just mean that in an advantageous, um, cohesive kind of way, right? So anyway, that was the spiel. If you guys want a personal reading from me, you can reach me at TaurusStarTarot.com. Namaste.